Good afternoon, esteemed participants. First of all, I would like to extend my great gratitude to the organizers of uh, the forum, to Sergei, for a possibility to speak here and share about our opinion about such an important problem as stereotactic radiotherapy of the prostate cancer. Traditionally, presentations about radiotherapy of that place. I started with the current recommendations concerning the choice of uh, therapy, the radical uh, treatment of patients or with different life expectation. In most scenarios, different. Uh, it is suggested that uh, the priority is given uh, to the radiotherapy is only for the patients uh, whose life expectancy is over 10 years. Uh, they suggest uh, the radical method. So we remember that we are living in the conditions of a pand pandemic which affected our lives and it affected radiotherapy. And quite obvious, there will be a, a fundamental change. If we see the recommendations published in 2020 concerning uh, the treatment of uh, uh, prostate cancer, the priority was a steroid, given to stereotactic uh, radiotherapy or uh, fractioning like, uh, with moderate uh, fractioning with about 20. Uh, and of the uh, uh, prostate ectonomy was uh, supposed uh, to uh, be postponed or not to be used. In the United States, we observe a tendency among different options for radiotherapy. Between 2004 and 2014, stereotactic radiotherapy was gaining popularity and such mentions as brachytherapy and uh, the uh, SBRT were becoming less popular. And probably uh, after the pandemic, this graph will change and the number of patients who will be treated with stereotactic radiotherapy will increase. Speaking about the efficiency of this method, uh, well, there's uh, a famous uh, clinical investigation uh, by Jackson, which showed that the five, seven years cumulative results of, for different groups of risk uh, constitute 93 to 97%. And that's a very good result that uh, actually is better than surgery in many cases. Well, the same survey showed uh, different uh, results for toxicity, the uh, GU, uh, the GI, and the sexual function. The results in this study were very are similar to those are shown uh, by the hyperfractioning or standard fractioning. When do we use uh, 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 stereotactical um, radiotherapy? Well, it is monotherapy with low and medium risk, and it's also uh, in the metastatic uh, lesion of uh, bones and uh, lymphal nodes metastasis. Well, you see uh, the uh, counterindications. They are very few. Those are urological and the proctological, and that's uh, the presence of uh, inflammatory process. Talking about uh, the technology that is used, the most interesting moment that differs this method from other methods of freeze is the other golden markers. Well, they are also used in other kinds of radiotherapy, but in stereotactic uh, therapy, it is the most justifiable because it allows you to uh, position the patient correctly and, which is more important, uh, to uh, assess uh, the shift or deviation of uh, the prostate. Well, there are different options for that. There is X-ray, there are IR, and other methods of control. 
Well, and this is the introducer which installs uh, the source and the golden markers uh, which are shown in the MRI. One, I would like to concentrate on certain technical aspects of uh, stereotactic uh, radiotherapy. Well, I, the previous speaker mentioned it that in different option, in different uh, methods of uh, uh, radiotherapy, uh, you can achieve uh, the same results, but uh, the few fractions, very high precision, and uh, the maximal local escalation of the dose and the reduction of compl uh, number of complications is typical of for STRT. The anatomy of the prostate, its closeness to the rectum, to the uh, nervous ganglia, and to blood vessels uh, result in uh, typical toxicity after radiotherapy. This shows what we observe in patients after STRT as concerns the rectum. This is the maximal isolation, 50 uh, grays, 10 fractions of 10 grays. And th this high energy can cause irreversible changes in the rectum wall. And using spacers, uh, as the previous speaker said, has become a standard for STRT in foreign uh, medical centers, and that allows us to move the rectum by one, one and a half centimeters and to avoid those complications. Well, certainly it will get a dose, but a much smaller dose, and because uh, there will be migration of, of the cells in the rectum, well, they can recuperate after a time as different from uh, the high dose area where these changes will be irreversible. Well, this is uh, the diagram for the introduction of spacer. This is a standard procedure. Lower is the uh, U, um, you know, ultrasonic uh, study, and it's a liquid spacer or a balloon. All those images were obtained in our clinic. Currently, none of the spaces have been officially uh, registered in Russia, so all of this is done within the framework of our clinical uh, uh, studies. But we hope that this will uh, become a standard practice in us. This is a comparison between uh, the substances that we use as spacer, uh, the space OR, that is polyethylene glycol, collagen, georonic uh, acid, biodegradable um, balloons, and blood clots, uh, which are used for, uh, as spacers. Uh, these are the parameters of the substances, and the most promising is the PEG hydrogel, based on ethylene glycol and geoluronic acid and biodegradable balloons. Three, Bergil and Bioprotect have been registered in Israel. The th third phase um, study or trial uh, has proved the efficiency of using spacers when assessing the late uh, rectum toxicity and uh, there were significant there was a significant difference between uh, the control group which did not use the spacers and the group which used the spacers the next problem is uh, the sexual dysfunction uh, the uh, studies uh, involved over 1,200 uh, patients and uh, the sexual dysfunction is developed in over 50% of men after uh, the, and this number of 50 to 50%. Uh, right now there's a lot of uh, papers which described that condition and it is proposed that 
it is the damage of the vessels, blood vessels, that uh, is the cause of it. Uh, the University of Michigan under Professor McLaughlin developed a concept uh, of RT which allowed to reduce the maximal uh, dose uh, on the vessels and the first plans are shown in, well, those are old ones, 2005, it's clear that the development of CT, of computer technologies, uh, has made big progress and uh, modern 3D models look different. In 2017, the results of a 12-year observation of this group was published. It was shown that if we use uh, the uh, spacers, uh, or we can uh, reduce uh, that uh, number of people of discussion by 30 percent and which demonstrates quite clearly its efficiency not uh, only compared to standard strt but with uh, surgery where the dysfun uh, the number of uh, people with uh, sexual dysfunction is about 12 what, 15 percent so the reduction of the load on the vessels uh, uh, constituted a fusion of uh, two uh, uh, IMO, MRI images and to control uh, uh, and contouring uh, the vessels uh, throughout the procedure, because usually we didn't do that, but uh, uh, then we cannot observe uh, the behavior of that vessel throughout its length. And this is the third uh, 3D vessel, and all the structures that are interested, the uh, 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 arteries inside penis and other arteries that pertain to the sexual function. And uh, it, proved, it was proved that of course, uh, depending on the anatomy of the patient, how uh, we can preserve the sexual function is about 80% of the, and that depends on the prost condition of the prostate and other bodies that are responsible for the, social, the sexual function. And this are, is the dose metering plans of the patients, uh, 3D models, the coronal, the sagittal, and the coronal scans that show that you can optimize the dose load in such a way, the dose rate in such a way that to maximally preserve the structures that are of interest to us. And below you see the uh, dose metering plan. Speaking about spacers again, apart from impacting the intactness of the rectum walls, uh, there was uh, a research published uh, showing that the space has changed the topography of the prostate and of the nervous ganglia, and that increases the possibility of uh, saving uh, the uh, sexual function, although the mechanism of um, the loss of sexual function has not yet been found. Nevertheless, uh, the impact of pacers on uh, the shift of uh, the nervous ganglia is assessed and uh, we will publish the results next year. Another important issue, also mentioned by the previous speaker, is a maximal escalation of dose, which increases uh, the reliability of and length of biochemical control. Uh, we compared three fractioning modes, uh, 38, well, you can see them in the screen. The maximal escalation of the dose demonstrates the highest level of biochemical control. Nevertheless, the higher the dose, the higher the possibility of uh, uh, complications. What are the problems? What are the ways of overcoming? It's the high dose rate like uh, planning of uh, CTRT when the whole uh, gland is uh, uh, 
uh, irradiated with a selective dose and we boost only uh, the most important part and once a week or every other day retrosparing prostate cancer stereostatic body radiotherapy and uh, we used that ureter spelling there and it showed that there was no difference in the level of toxicity and it was very low and this uh, was also proved by dose metric control and VMAT is uh, was proved to be more efficient and when doing the CTR team uh, the urethral catheter uh, is feasible because if we install it we can clearly see what's happening on the other hand the catheter increases the possibility of infection and when we developed uh, the urethra uh, saving STRT, uh, we used two sequences, contrast and non-contrast, which allowed us to clearly delineate the urethra without uh, the installing the catheter and to optimize the dose in such a way as to reduce uh, the possibility of uh, complications in the lower part.